when you think of a brilliant chess tactical combination, you think of something like five to 10 moves max. But in the game Petrosian Guimard in 1955, Petrosian played out a 17 move crushing attack to win in a beautiful manner. So let's take a look. Petrosian had the white pieces and the opening and early middle game we'll go through very quickly because really we wanna focus on this beautiful attack that occurred in this game. And so Petrosian maneuvered his pieces as he usually does, finding the ideal square for them. And right around here, we already see that white is starting to make some advancements with their pieces. And I would really consider this the first move here for white in the 17 move attack. And I'm gonna pose this as a question. What did Petrosian play here that really started the attack going? Because it's clear that white has some nice pieces here, but you know, in the next move for black, if white doesn't do anything urgent, then rook takes d4 followed by queen takes e6 will really rid white of any attacking chances. And so white really has to play um, with a sense of urgency here. And so what did white play? What did Petrosian play to keep the attack going and to maintain with some initiative. He played the move h5, and black took on d4, again with the idea of bishop takes d4, queen takes e6, and black should be okay in that position, but instead h takes on g6, and now king takes, because if the king moves away anywhere, then now white will be able to take because it comes with check, and therefore this bishop uh, will also be able to retreat to a safe square. And so king takes g6, the only testing move. Uh, but against Petrosian, he managed uh, Petrosian to find the perfect combination, and this is indeed law. So bishop takes f5, uh, peace sacrifice to keep the attack going, and the, the main idea with this peace sacrifice is to find a way to get the queen into the attack. So queen to h5 um, comes in. And now it's already very tricky. So king moves to e6, and here the move queen to g4 was played, which still is winning. And you'll see that white does manage to still have an initiative and end up winning this game um, really well. However, a more simple win would have been bishop takes d4. Just taking this piece, there's still many threats going on, so the attack is definitely not over. And this would have been a perfectly good way uh, to win, but queen to g4 also does the job because after king to d5, queen to f5 check, followed by queen to d7 check, and after king to c5, here's the moment where white really brings an extra piece into this game. This rook on e1, not doing much, but now rook to c1, sending more forces into the game, and after knight to c3, which was practically forced uh, because of king to b6, bishop to d4 is going to be crushing. So knight to c3, and this seems really weird, but it, it does carry some ideas. For example, you have to be careful here. If you take with the bishop, then suddenly rook takes queen. And well, you can take back the queen with check, but you have to remember here um, as white that you sacrificed a lot of material in the beginning of this attack. And actually, I think also before the attack started, you were already down an exchange. And so for that reason, you really need the attack to work out. You cannot really settle for something like this because the end result, black is still going to uh, be up a lot of material. And so for that reason, instead of taking with the bishop, rook takes with check, the king moves to b6. And now uh, I'm gonna, I guess, pose this as the second uh, place where I think it's, it's quite beautiful to try to find what Petrosian played. And so take a moment, pause the video again, and try to figure out how can you keep the attack going um, in a situation where it might not be so clear. And so here you play the move a5, check. And so the idea is after king takes a5, now the queen can enter the game and really king takes a5 was forced. Queen takes on a5, then queen takes on d4 because now uh, it comes with check and the attack continues. And if something like king to uh, a6, even rook takes c6 works perfectly well, sacrificing even more material, but the point is, I mean, this is just totally crushing. You're gonna end up winning a lot of material. And I mean, actually it should be uh, pointed out here because of how unsafe this king is, um, you're gonna probably be able to, in one way or another, win 
a rook as well. And so this is indeed very, very crushing and, and winning for white. And so going back, really black has to take because going down also, I should mention, will just transpose into the same position that happened in the game because after king takes a5, queen to a7 check was played. And so king to b5, queen to b7 check, looking like maybe white doesn't know how to continue the attack, but now a very beautiful move, rook to c1. Uh, it looks very slow, but it's actually quite beautiful. Of course, transferring the rook over to the a-file, and I mean, this checkmate is uh, very difficult to stop. Black tried to play the move rook to d1 with the idea rook takes, queen takes, and the queen is now a very nice defender, and this definitely... Um, is a good method for black to try to defend, but in this case, it simply doesn't work because the rook, queen, and even pawn here, as you will shortly see, are just too powerful next to this unsafe king. And so here, queen a7 check, uh, the knight has to block because uh, it should be noted something like king to b5, queen to a4 check is gonna be either checkmate uh, like this, or if the king just goes up, white can take the knight, and. Again, in all of these lines, the attack continues after this. So uh, that would be very crushing. And so after this check on a7, knight to a6 practically forced. And here, um, you need to think outside the box a little bit because with your heavy pieces, there's not a great way to continue any sort of attack. The knight, unfortunately, does cover these two checking squares. And so, uh, and the rook also cannot enter uh, through d Five, and you might think maybe something like rook to d4 is a little clever. It's trying to come to a4 and the queen defends the rook, of course, but simply queen takes b3 or maybe black can throw in a check first. But the point is suddenly um, the king, although it is still unsafe, there's too many defenders here. Uh, and, you know, you can look at all these pieces. The, the king is indeed uh, very covered now by black's pieces. And so the attack does sort of start to come to an end here. And so for that reason, you don't want to play rook to d4, instead play b4. And you throw this pawn at black, but you do it under your uh, condition. Because now if black takes with the king, which is what was played, we'll get to that in a second. But first, if queen takes rook to a1, uh, followed by queen takes a6, and this is game over. And once again, the attack will continue here um, in a very nice and crushing manner for white. And so king takes. Um, but now the final move of the 17 move long attack, queen to b6. And in view of all of these possible uh, hanging pieces, right? The queen might be hanging and the knight and pawn are definitely hanging. In view of all this uh, attacking ideas for, for white, black simply resigned here and you can check with an engine, you can analyze yourself, this is totally winning for white. So, super beautiful attack, and of course Petrosian did not calculate this all the way when he played h5, but just understanding the idea that, you know, white has too many pieces for h5 and this attack not to work, I think really uh, shows the brilliancy of Tigre and Petrosian. So thank you guys for watching this video, subscribe if you're new around here, if you want other videos from Tigre and Petrosian I've made, sort of a compilation of game analysis of Petrosian's game. So if you're interested in that, check out this playlist here, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.